everyone. My name is Jen Eberly. I'm from the Kids Therapy Center. I'm a counselor. Um, I work a lot with child and families. And so today I'm going to teach you a technique that I um, use a lot with the parents that I work with. I actually use this myself with my own kids. Um, so today's technique is going to be something you can use for a child who's having a meltdown and you have no idea how to calm them down. Um, they're just totally out of control. Um, maybe we're feeling like we're getting out of control. <laughs> like we have that feeling in ourselves where it's hard to regulate and we just don't know how to get out of the situation. Um, and so this was a technique that I've learned um, from the book, The Whole Brain Child by Tina Bryson and um, Dr. Dan Siegel. And it is phenomenal. There is a parenting one that's called No Drama Discipline. Also a very good book. Anything um, with those two, they are really good about explaining it in a way that's easy to understand and easy to apply. So I would definitely recommend their books. Um, but so today I'm gonna talk about um, this is based on their information and their techniques in that book. Um, so I describe to parents that we both, or it's a, everybody has, you know, a left brain and a right brain. Um, your left brain is where we are more, um, you know, where we think about the facts, about justice, um, whether things are fair or not. Um, it's just like the details of things. Um, and our right brain is like that big picture, our emotions. Um, and we use both, you know, to, we need both sides of our brain to really understand um, and conceptualize different problems. And, but when we're escalated, sometimes we get stuck in our right brain or in our left brain. And this was kind of eye-opening to me when I learned this, because if you think about it, your child doesn't always deal with problems the same way. Sometimes they're stuck on the details and sometimes they're stuck on the emotion and they can't get out of it. Um, and so how we interact with them and approach this is going to be different. So that's really the first step is we have to identify which side of the brain is the child using at that point during their meltdown. If they keep saying to you, like, um, you know, they're ruminating on the facts that just happened, like their brother just hit them and then took their toy and then this happened and then this happened, they're in left brain mode. If they're saying things like this isn't fair and you never, you know, do this for me and all that, that's left brain mode. If they're um, just totally displaying all this emotion and they're kind of uh, just stuck in that, they can't even process what happened, they can't even describe it to you, they're in right brain mode, they're stuck with the emotion. Um, so first we identify, we connect with the brain that they're in and then we redirect. So if somebody's in left brain mode, we would connect by saying, um, I know that this is what happened and, you, and then you said this is what happened and, um, and I hear you saying this um, and then you redirect to the other side of the brain, which would be identifying their feelings. Um, these things happened, you describe all that and then this is how you felt about it. So what you're doing is you're helping to integrate the brain and when our brain is integrated, we can process information and learn better. Um, if our brain isn't integrated, um, we tend to get dysregulated. Like we tend to flip our lid is what we call it. And we use a hand model to describe it to kids like this. And so I'll teach you this because kids love this. Um, they get it. This, if this is our brain, um, this is like the inside of our brain, like our most, um, uh, we call it like a reptilian brain, I guess, in the field of that's your most instinctual brain. It's the fight or flight. Your big emotions are there. Um, but to the kids, we ask them, what do you think your animal brain would be? Um, and some of them will say like a dinosaur or a gorilla or whatever. And then they'll usually tell you why. Um, like I have one kid that would say, I'm like, I have a gorilla brain when I'm really, really mad because I jump up and down and I throw things awesome. Now we have this common language where I can really talk to you about your anger using what your animal brain is. So this is when they're flipping their lid and they're totally out of control and they're just using their animal brain. And we tell them, so you can't connect with the other part of your brain because you flipped your lid. And the only way to bring it back down to your talking brain is to start to relax. So they need to do some of those relaxations. How do you calm your gorilla brain? well, I can take deep breaths and go to my room for a while until I can 
um, just figure out what I'm going to do or, um, you know, all those different coping skills that they learn. They can identify that's when you need to use it. You should use it before you get to that point. But some kids, you know, you don't recognize it until now it's too late. Now you, all you need to do is calm down. And so we teach them this. And it's a nonverbal cue to the child of, you know, you're in your gorilla brain right now. And it's kind of like a code word. Then they know, like, you're not saying I'm a bad person because I'm angry. You're just saying, um, you know, I'm getting to that point where I'm starting to lose control and now I'm just using my animal brain. So kids get that part. So that's one technique that I use. Um, the other technique is, you know, we can help them process verbally by what I had described earlier is connecting to that side of their brain. If they're in left brain mode or right brain mode and you're um, seeing their emotions, you would say you're really sad because this didn't happen for you. You know, the because is like you're flipping it over to the other side of their brain um, and they'll correct you if you're wrong. You really want them to be the processing one. Um, what I'll hear parents say a lot is they'll ask a ton of questions when their kid is upset. That's a big no-no because when your brain's already agitated and then you have all these questions, you have to process it differently and that's going to make you more upset because it's kind of like your brain is already overloaded and now you're putting more gasoline on the fire. So don't ask a ton of questions. Um, in fact, say very, very little when your kid is having a meltdown. It's more about your nonverbals. Um, so one of the things that I know happens a lot, and I'm totally guilty of myself, it's hard to stay calm when your kid is flipping out. Um, so one technique that is like gold, it's like works all the time, is when your child, let's say they're standing, um, you know, like maybe five feet away from you, um, and you're having this discussion back and forth and it's escalating and they're now at the point where they're super upset about something. Um, maybe they couldn't go outside when they wanted to or whatever. And they're having a meltdown. And if you go and you sit on the floor, not necessarily too close to them, because if they're already agitated, you know, instinctually, they might feel like threatened. Not that they think you're going to hurt them or anything, but when we're upset and then people are getting close to us or they're taller than us, like, you know, we obviously are to our parents, um, depending on how old your kids are, um, we feel threatened. And then so we up the ante more. So what you do is you just go and you sit and you just listen and you give them this like empathy. And when, um, when we do that, you're doing two things. You're calming yourself down, which is awesome. That's what we need to have happen. But when they can sense that we're calm and we're not threatening them and we're in this more like submissive pose, um, you know, instinctually as a mammal, that's a sign that like, I'm not a threat to you. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. And isn't that what we want our children to know when they're having a meltdown? Um, and what I see happen often when I do this with my own kids is when I finally sit down it calms me down. It forces me to like put it all away. You know, I, I can deal with that later, but it forces me to calm down. And they usually come and they'll sit on my lap or they'll just snuggle into me, um, put their head on my shoulder. Um, and then we can just, just regulate, just work on regulation and attachment and, and, you know, working on that bond again. Um, and so it goes so much better than when I'm standing away from them and I'm trying to use my words to, to de-escalate them. That rarely ever works. Um, and usually we have to take a break and then come back to it later when we're both calm and we can talk about it again. But when we can use our body language to show them I'm not a threat to you, beautiful things can happen. So, um, so that's my little tip today, actually two tips, um, uh, teaching them about their animal brain and using that, um, those different techniques on how to connect and redirect, um, but also using the um, sitting and being in more of a submissive pose when 
um, when your kids are escalating. So hope you liked this video. Hope it was helpful for you. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Kids Therapy Center. Um, and I will see you later. Thanks.